I'm Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios. As we head to AWS reInvent, we wanted to take a moment to chat with AMD's Mike Thompson. Mike, thank you for joining us. What are you looking forward to at this year's reInvent? It's nice to talk to GeekWire again, Brian. Thanks for having me. Uh, looking forward to reInvent this year is we're bringing three marquee customers on stage with us, Pixar, Netflix, and Pinterest in order to talk a little bit about their performance and cost optimization journeys landing on AMD. Why then, if these partners are making the choice and shifting over to AMD, why does processor choice matter? You know, that's a good question. The latest and greatest generation uh, processor from AMD, fourth generation Epic, we call it Genoa, that AWS deployed last year has such high performance that it enables some cost optimization options that and performance optimization options that customers really haven't considered before. Um, it's critical to land applications wisely on instances that are optimized for whatever the application needs. It could be hourly cost. It could be performance driven cost optimizations, especially for license per core applications or maximized performance. And performance driven cost optimization is pretty novel to a lot of cloud users. So if you have two instances and they compare them, a lot of times they'll say, all right, instance A is a dollar per hour, instance B is a dollar 15 per hour, it's going to be cheaper on A. But that's not true. If processor B has double the performance, even though its hourly cost is a little higher because it runs so much smaller, faster, or smaller instance size, the net job cost comes out to be more efficient, less cost, lower TCO. Uh, and so, so that is one of the main reasons why processor choice matters. When AWS launched these instances last summer, seven times faster than they've ever launched our four generic instance types before, I'm going to paraphrase from their launch material, but they said seventh generation uh, instances powered by AMD are designed to be the best x86 performance and price performance in all of EC2. So in some cases, if customers simply choose the wrong processor vendor in their instance, even though it looks like it's a lower hourly cost, they could be leaving up to 40 or 45% of their spend on the table that's not necessary to spend, and that's driven from the performance. Mike, help me understand here, how do you walk the customer through that calculation, through that, that math? Uh, there's a couple of ways, but like at the top level, I run a ton of benchmarks on every new generation of instances powered by AMD and AWS and across Java, Nginx, FFmpeg, MySQL, SQL Server, and Redis databases. And that covers applications from the front end application tier to the middle application tier to the back end uh, data tier. Uh, a range of applications across those that I propose is representative of general IT. If I compare the benchmarks between, say, 6i and 7a, that shows, on average, double the performance and hence 37% lower cost. And you have to understand that that lower cost is driven by the performance because customers can either run a smaller footprint, smaller instance size, or they get faster runtime. And because of that, it's a lower net job cost. How can AMD help their customers with their VMware transformations? Sure, and you know, that's actually a very related subject. So the observations I've made of the markets across various segments, talking to customers, ITDMs, sellers, an observation of the markets is at first, when this VMware thing happened, there was panic at the boil the ocean problem that customers thought they needed to solve to move an entire virtualized infrastructure from wherever it is to a new solution can be multiple years of work. And so there was a lot of panic early on when these new pricing things came out. And what I'm seeing now is the markets and people are settling down from the froth a little bit. And what they're deciding is, yeah, you're right. We can't boil the ocean. But what we can do is move the most impactful workloads like SQL Server, for instance, if they can lift that individual workload or application out of uh, VMware and drop it in either native AWS virtualization or Red Hat OpenShift virtualization. They get a major cost benefit. They take a lot of what they were licensing out of the virtualized environment and they move it somewhere else. And then finally, I think what customers are starting to come to terms with is they don't want to let this happen again. They want to land on non-proprietary landing zones. AWS native virtualization as well as Red Hat OSV or ROSA enables that. 
And so we have a couple of sales motions in play with both AWS and some of our partners that make it pretty straightforward for customers to go in and pull out the highest spend applications and land them somewhere open and not be subject to those high costs of VMware. And Mike, you answered a little bit of this, but I want to get a little more detail from you, if I might. How do customers take advantage of uh, performance and cost optimizations? What are the next steps? What do they need to know? And I understand you have some sessions at reInvent specifically for that. We have three sessions at reInvent this year. So if any of the brief topics that we've touched on today are of interest to you, and in addition, AI, ML, and CPU inference, those are the major themes. Modernization at scale, optimized migration, as well as the AI portfolio from AMD and CPU inference. So please come join us in the sessions or come to the booth where we'll have a bunch of chalk talks around that. But to get back to your question, Brian, if customers want to take advantage of the performance and cost optimizations, how do they do it? The easiest way is to reach out to your AMD rep or find me on LinkedIn and we can get you connected with the appropriate resources to help you with your journey. AMD has two key tools to help customers on their optimization journey. One is called CCA. It's a redesigned cloud cost, op, uh, cost advisor that gives quick and easy cost estimations just based on a cost and usage report. So you can get a very quick estimate of how much can I save? And I've done a lot of analyses on these in the past few months. And I'm usually seeing around a 37% cost saving simply by flipping the switch from um, Xeon powered instances to AMD Epic powered instances. If you're not resizing, it's easy. If customers want to resize and take advantage of license cost TCO savings on applications like SQL Server that are licensed per core, you got to do a little bit of qualification, but you can modernize and downsize at the same time in order to cut the number of cores in use by half, and that dramatically drives down the license cost, which dominates the TCO. So net-net, 45% savings at a 23% performance boost. Um, so, so those are a few of uh, the mechanisms that customers can use to adopt AMD. AWS also has programs. Their OLA tool, op Optimization and Licensing Assessment Workflow, can identify opportunities for license cost savings like I just described. And then we have a lot of partners that are on board like GSIs, regional, uh, regional system integrators, MSPs, as well as ISV partners for assessments and transformation services. Texture has a really good assessment tool, particularly for energy savings estimates. And we have some programs running with them now. Uh, a partner Evolve runs AWS OLA licensing assessments. Uh, and they do a really good job with that. And there's others. We're onboarding new partners all the time. So please reach out to one of them or your AMD rep for help finding partners that can take care of you. And it sounds like there's lots of great opportunity here, not only to bring down that TCO, but to improve performance overall as well. Mike, we look forward to seeing you at AWS reInvent in Las Vegas. I'm Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios. Thanks for watching.